question for you. In your opinion, has failing at video games become too hard? Have developers made games so easy we have to impose our own rules to make them more difficult? That is going to be up to you to decide. All I know is I'm one gamer up against the challenge of beating RDR2 by failing every mission objective. This is the end of a road I started over a year ago. So saddle up and let's finish this. Him, you idiot! Wow, well, that's good, everybody. Good news, everyone! I'm a horse's butt! We open the series finale on the serene plains of Beecher's Hope, and then we quickly leave the place because it's a wretched dump. You may recall from our last adventure, I was seeking a horse to join us on this last leg of the journey. I started my search at the Dakota River to see if Epic Fail had really died all those years ago. Perhaps he made it out of the water and was living nearby wild and free, but alas, it was not to be. I visited the local stables but was too poor to make a purchase. This left me with one option, play the rest of the game on foot. Or I could take my existing horse and head off in search of a wild horse. <sighs> I better get going while there's still daylight. Days had passed by the time I got to the mountains. The cold burns in my lungs with every breath I take. I'm fading fast as I look for an animal for Han Solo to cut open so I can get warm inside it. Oh yeah, that'll work. I thought they smelled bad on the outside. Huh? Sweet, equine of the plotline, it's the White Arabian. You've seen me intentionally fail a lot in this series. Now, it's time to watch me succeed. Take it! Oh, come back here. Come on, horse, work with me here. No nope. son of a... And so on and so forth. Until... Steadfast atop my noble mount, I ride out of the mountains with a bond that can only be forged between the manliest of men and the beastliest of beasts. Rays of twilight fade into yesterday as I hit on the perfect name for my awesome steed. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce... Twilight Sparkle from the fourth generation of My Little Pony. You might be thinking, what does that name have to do with failure? And I'm here to tell you everything, because it fails to meet every expectation for what a macho gunslinger's horse should be named. That's why it's perfect. That's a nice horse. Back at Beecher's, Uncle tells me Charles is in saint -Denis. He's getting ready to throw a fight by the time we catch up to him, and I'm conflicted. I could bet on Charles because he's my friend, or I could bet on the other guy since Charles was planning to throw the fight anyway. Either way, I'll have to hear about how the fight went later because my virgin eyes cannot handle the violence. So how'd I do? Next time, be my friend, mister. You chose poorly. Charles joins us back at the ranch, and I meet up with Sadie for dinner in Blackwater. She tells me she's on the trail of a bounty that's going to take us out to New Austin. She encourages me to eat well before we begin our journey, but as Abigail recently left me, I'm extra cognizant of how caloric intake impacts my figure. I want to be the type of man women desire, so I push away from the table without eating dessert. But the joke's on me, as Rockstar still fails my mission despite my health-conscious dietary choices. Women all over Blackwater want me, and that makes Rockstar Jealous. Next time, I may as well pound that peach cobbler like I plan to live past 1911. We catch up to the bounty target, who by this point has been captured by a rival. I fail a series of objectives and make sure the bounty target has a miserable trip back to civilization. Hit him, John, please! I slap you! Back at the ranch, I struggle to get Uncle to open up to me about how he really feels. No wonder she didn't stay with you. Not even a retired two dollar whore would stay with you. You're hopeless. And I mean that literally. You got no hope. Oh, darling Abigail. I've changed. Come live with me in an outhouse. I wouldn't ask my worst enemy to take a shit in. What are you trying to say? We finish our therapy session with a stress management exercise. Namely, we pull down the shack, currently occupying John's property with the help of some horses. Rockstar must have really wanted to showcase their building demolition physics in this mission. Pretty much every button on my controller is disabled during the sequence, so there will be no running away, no offing myself of any kind, and not even the option to skip the checkpoint. Real-time cutscene shenanigans also didn't work for me, as you can see in the footage. This is because you can't throw anything toward the area the game designates as your camp, and if I try to start the mission while being, uh, let's say, on fire, well, the fire goes out once I cross the boundary of camp.
camp. The last thing I tried has to do with the cougar spawn point nearby. I thought if I could get it to attack me during the mission, it would result in failure. Unfortunately, the cougar appears to be coded to not follow the player onto the ranch. So this is one objective on which I had to take a big fat L. With the shack destroyed, it's time to get the necessary materials to build my home. I head into tall trees with Charles and some other hired guns to buy tools from Nils. The great thing about Nils is nothing, and I mean nothing causes him to break character. Okay. 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 This mission was on pace to have only one casualty when we were attacked by kamikaze space furbies living in the woods behind my house. They climbed up in the tree! <laughs> As is the nature of a run like this, the mission failed with multiple casualties within my party, but only Mr. Wayne's was canonical. With the tools now in our possession, it's time to do one of the most memorable missions in the game, which, for some reason, only 27% of players have completed. And by doing the most memorable mission, I mean we're not doing it at all because the house will get built even if I don't press any buttons. Well, let me have a rule and a saw and a board and I'll cut it. With the house built, John sets down to write to Abigail. He invites her to join them at the ranch. Now all we have to do is defend our property from those things and we'll still be alive if she decides to show up. Uh, what were they called again? The Kamikaze Space Furbies, dear. Splendid word! Now they're nibbling the hoops. <laughs> <laughs> Kamikaze Space Furby, gone. Sometime later. Uncle and I strike up a polite conversation about building a barn. Barn will take three of us six months to build. Oh, you don't build a barn, dumbass. What do you think this is, 1785? <laughs> you buy one pre-cut. Well, he's obviously feeling spry this morning, so I challenge him to a race. I can't move like I used to. Man, I never was that fast. We head into Blackwater to arrange for a pre-cut barn to be delivered to the ranch. I go to the bank to get money for the purchase. I remember going to the bank with my parents as a kid. The bank would have this bowl of lollipops setting out, so naturally I would take one every single time. I think more places should give out lollipops even if you're an adult. Imagine going in for a colonoscopy and getting a chocolate lollipop while you wait on the doctor. Not only is it a tasty treat, but it's a great way to take your mind off the fact that you're about to be anally probed. And if there's anything I don't want to think about, it is how I am about to be anally probed. The banker obviously needs a colonoscopy of his own because there is a massive stick up his but he turns me down for the loan. On the way out of the bank, we meet Sadie. Since I need money, I accept some bounty work she's offering. The bounty is really far away, and I don't want to ride that far. Ah, Uncle bounced back pretty quickly from being burned earlier, so I'll skip the checkpoint like this. I, uh, I said, I said I'll skip the checkpoint like... I will have to find another way to skip the checkpoint as I realize I have burned Uncle for nothing. But first, I lay him to rest in his favorite spot, right behind the local bar. Rest assured, I did find a way to skip the ride to Painted Sky. I guess our fraternizing day is done. You idiot! We capture the bounty target, a guy named Ramon Cortez. Sadie and I take him to Rhodes. The sheriff's plan is to take Ramon to San Denis to hang once his deputies arrive. I think the writing for this game is fantastic as a general rule, but it feels weak here. You already have the two bounty hunters who brought this man in from another state. Why wait for backup before transporting him within the same state? Oh yeah, because the plot demands it. Speaking of the plot, here it comes now. A shootout starts and I take action. If I kill the man they're trying to save, they'll leave us alone, right? Plus, he's scheduled to hang anyway. I try it. Come on, man, shoot him! You killed him, you idiot! <sighs> My attempts at common sense justice have failed. Ramon is free from prison when his men blow a hole in the wall. The sheriff insists we don't get paid until he delivers the prisoner to Saint Denis. Sticking with your guns is a weird choice when it was your plan that got us into this mess. Fortunately, it doesn't take long for him to see the light. Can I get a hallelujah? We track Ramon to his campsite at Dewberry Creek. I recall terrible things happening the last time I was asked to cover Sadie, but she insists on doing it her way. This is my show, John Marston. 
do as you're goddamn told. We delivered Ramon to the sheriff again, but this could have all been avoided. That mission took so long that by the time I got back, a barn had been built at the ranch. Uncle doesn't need an occasion to drink, so this seems like as good an occasion as any. This calls for a drink. Come bustle, bustle, drink about and let us merry be. We awaken to find Uncle has been kidnapped by those things that live in the woods behind the ranch. By the time we find him, he's being cooked alive. I save him by using his half-naked body as a bullet sponge, and at this point I am reminded that it's forest fires that are the real killers, much like all those unfulfilled childhood dreams you could be pursuing right now. We get Uncle back to the ranch, and sometime later, Abigail returns. It's a really touching reunion, and I can't think of anything ridiculous to say about it. So there you go. Sadie stops by the ranch to see if I want to help her with another bounty. She also mentions a rumor about Micah being spotted. Though Abigail doesn't want me to get involved, I eventually talk her into it because we need the money. Sadie and I pick up the trail in tall trees. Whoever made this camp has blatantly ignored the no-littering policy in these woods, so I destroy their camp in a fit of rage. We track the bounty to a remote cabin. It's here we come face to face with a Chicago Bears fan in cosplay. Yeah, Bears. Sadie scares him away before I can ask him why he sounds so much like the guy from that SNL skit, so I take out my frustration on her and her horse. We've now come to the point in the game where almost all the fun missions are done. I'm forced to spend time bonding with my family while I await the final mission. Jack and I attempt a fishing trip. I don't really like fishing. I engage him in other topics of conversation since he's such a buzzkill, and we lose track of time wandering around the countryside for a bit. Pretty countryside, ain't it? We make it to the river, and I notice that something is different about it. Go to sleep, you little baby. The presence of these sirens does nothing to help our chances of catching a fish, but at least Jack decides he likes fishing by the end of the trip. I told you this was a good fishing spot. Jack realizes Rufus is missing and looks for him. He must have found him because he starts hollering for me to come to him. Jack! Please come here! Uh, well, let's see. Uh, nope, nope, he isn't over there, and uh, nope, uh, that's not him either, and... <whistles> Ooh la la. I found out he's asking for me because Rufus has been bitten by a snake. If there's one thing I know, it's the internet never wants to see a dog get killed, even a virtual one. That's why I'm pleased to report I found a way to fail this objective without killing the dog. Mm, not exactly. Okay, look. This is another sequence where all the buttons on my controller are disabled except the ones the game wants me to use. That means to fail it, I have to not press those buttons. Bully me in the comments if you must. Now that I've spent quality bonding time with Jack, it's Abigail's turn to be tormented, er, ahem, <clears throat> uh, treated like the fine woman she is. We take a ride into town, as it's been ages since we've spent time together. Everything goes exactly according to plan. Or horribly. It really depends on who you ask. Is there anything else you want? Let's just walk around and see where it takes us. I do have to be back by dinner time. I offer to have a picture taken with Abigail so she can put it up on her Instagram. But before that happens, I try to impress her with my swimming abilities. I regret mentioning the picture idea to her because it's all she can think about now, even as I flounder in the lake. Are we getting our picture took or what? Damn women! The next sequence only reinforces that taking a picture was a horrible decision on John's part. It's almost like Rockstar wanted to give me one final screw you before finishing the series. You guessed it, my controls are locked to only those the game wants me to use. And to add insult to injury, I don't have the option for a lifeline. The picture shall be forever on my mantle as a testament to my inability to fail this sequence. The time has come to propose to Abigail. How tragic it would be if I chickened out at the last minute and rode all the way to the nearest waterfall to unalive both myself and my bride-to-be. Okay, so the game wouldn't let me do that, but I wanted everyone to know I tried. It was a normal day on the ranch when Sadie approached. I knew this meant only one thing. This never-ending story was about to end. Despite Abigail's protests, I knew what had to be done. Don't let him go. This place ain't no more real than... than one of Jack's dragons. Written on the pages is the answer to a never-ending story. Ah. 
Sadie tells us one of Micah's old partners named Cleet has been spotted nearby. Charles gives a C effort at best while trying to catch him. Come on, come on, John, hurry it up. But Sadie makes up for this by unleashing her inner middle linebacker. Boom. The game wants us to bully Cleet into telling us Micah's location, and Sadie responds with the same energy of an incredulous boss whose employee is quitting the minimum wage job that has been offered to them. Get him up here! One way or another, getting past this objective reveals Micah is on Mount Hagen. These events delight the crowd of local well-wishers. The Mount Hagen climb goes as well as you would expect. I try failing the mission by having Charles get shot, and when that doesn't work, I have Sadie stabbed. Since neither of those options worked, I use them as a meat shield while I ponder my next move. Then, Sadie surprises everyone by using the Force to toss Joe off the mountain. The revelation that Sadie has been a Jedi this whole time sends me running away in a panic. To my surprise, skipping that one checkpoint allows me to get all the way to Micah, but before I fail to take him out, I come face to face with the real final boss of this run. And his name is John C. With the fly dead, I could finally focus on not shooting Micah. Wait, that came out wrong in the ears of a Red Dead player, so I should clarify. I will shoot him when I'm not supposed to and I will not shoot him when I am supposed to in order to fail the mission. One thing I thought was interesting is if I choose not to shoot Micah when I'm expected to, he will shoot both me and Dutch. This makes sense because Dutch has shot Micah by this point, and it's a cool detail Rockstar thought to add, which I had never seen before. The final cutscene features Micah hurting himself in his confusion as he falls over dead without any bullet wounds on his body. Well, let me have a rule and a saw and a board and I'll cut it. I'll climb up a ladder with a hammer and a nail and I'll nail it. Well, we worked so hard to build a little house together. In the snow or the rain or the ice cold wind, whenever. No matter what the weather. Again. Let's talk about some stats for this run before we wrap things up. There are a total of nine sequences in this game that must be cleared by the player. In other words, they cannot be failed or abandoned. If we allow for glitches and exploits, that number may be even smaller, but with normal gameplay, the following objectives must be cleared. From chapter two, the player must buy a horse, donate debt money to the camp lockbox, and escape Valentine during the final shootout. From chapter three, the player must hitch a horse outside the road's train station before robbing the stagecoach with Trelawney. They must also complete two sequences after getting captured by the O'Driscolls. One, try to run away, and two, free themselves so they can cauterize their wound. From chapter five, players must open the gate in the cave while walking with Dutch and Gloria. From the second part of the epilogue, players have to tear down the shack at Beecher's Hope and take a picture with Abigail. Every other objective in this game's main story quests can either be failed through gameplay or skipped using the abandoned task feature. And in spite of all that, only 26% of players have made it to the end credits. I get it, there are other factors in play here that contribute to the number being that low. These are factors like time, for example, that have nothing to do with how difficult the game is. But I still think it's wild that when you break it down, a major AAA game like this only required the player to do nine things to beat it. Feel free to tell this to that one friend you have who keeps saying they want to beat this game, but still hasn't done it yet. And with that, we have reached the end of this series. I still have more videos planned, and they may or may not cover the Red Dead games. I will say whatever the topics are, I hope you'll enjoy them. Thanks for sticking with me, and until next time, make it count. <laughs>